Hello, my name is Thomas Dimitrovich. This session will specifically speak to transformer basics and the impact of the turns ratio on voltages and currents. We'll focus on the transformation of currents in this session as it directly pertains to selective coordination. The estimated duration of this presentation is three minutes. A transformer is a device that transfers energy by magnetic induction from one circuit to another. Usually, the voltage and current are transformed from one level to another. In this session, we're going to learn more with this regard as it pertains to selective coordination. These are the basic transformer equations that illustrate how the turns ratio impacts voltages and currents around a transformer. N1 is the number of turns in the winding of the primary of this transformer. N2 is the number of turns in the secondary winding of this transformer. These two values relate to each other as either the secondary current divided by the primary current or the primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage. We will be using the equations pertaining to current for this session. The turns ratio of a transformer impacts the currents we see on the secondary and primary in such a manner that currents on the primary or secondary can be what we call reflected to the other side of the transformer based on the turns ratio. The relationship is shown in these two basic equations. To understand this, let's use an example. If we know the primary and secondary voltage of this transformer is 480 to 208 volts, and we know the secondary current is 100 amps, we can calculate the primary current using the standard equation for I1. This shows that when this transformer is supplying 100 amp load, the primary current will only be 43 0.33 amps. Here's another example that addresses the transformation of short circuit currents when the short circuit is on the secondary of the transformer. For this 480 to 208 volt transformer, should a fault occur on the secondary, the maximum short circuit current that could be seen on the secondary is 2,082 amps. Using our equation to reflect this current to the primary shows us that the primary current would only be 903 amps. This is just a different way of looking at that exact same calculation that we just made. During this faulted condition, if I place a current meter in the secondary and primary conductors of this transformer, the ammeter on the secondary would read 2,082 amps, the current being delivered to the short circuit. The ammeter on the primary would read 903 amps, which is calculated in the equation at the top side of this slide. From a selective coordination perspective, during a fault, the overcurrent protective device on the secondary would see 2,082 amps flowing through it. The overcurrent protective device on the primary would only see 903 amps during this same short circuit event. These are the two important equations you need to know. Current reflected from the low voltage side of the transformer to the high voltage side of the transformer will always get smaller. Current reflected from the high voltage side of the transformer to the low voltage side of the transformer will always get larger. And remember the connection of the transformer, primary and secondary windings, whether it be delta, y, or other, does not impact these calculations. Thank you for sharing your time to talk about this technical topic.